Okay, so now to introduce our guest of the evening. With us tonight is Lester Mayers, a Brooklyn native, a graduate of the Department of Theater Arts at SUNY New Paltz, and an MFA graduate of the Jack Kruick School of Disembodied Poets. Mayers is a gay, black, feminine, and a feminist tackling issues that the public has historically ignored. Not only are his words used to speak out against injustice, but Lester also makes sure to speak life into marginalized identities. His words are filled with power, love, inspiration, and most of all, liberation. Accompanying Lester are Matt Carvin and Katara Jordan. Please provide them your undivided attention and enjoy Love Lessons with Lester. your belly hang. Nobody is judging you but you. As your eyes are closed, I want you to feel your breath. I want you to feel the shirt on your back, the socks or the shoes gripping your ankles, the jewelry in your ear, the glasses on your face, the mask, Sometimes we get so used to being in this, in this body, we don't even realize what we're carrying. We don't realize the costume we have on. Say with your eyes closed and listen to us and us only. I want you to see a mirror appear before you. 
want you to look in this mirror and see yourself right now as you exist. And if you're brave enough, see yourself wearing absolutely nothing. I want you to see it all. The parts you adore. The parts that you've been told to hate. And for one second, I want you to tell yourself, I love you. into a seven-year-old. And whatever your life was like when you were seven, I want you to embrace it in this moment. I want you to look at that seven-year-old and see the tears if they come. See the arms desperately needing to be held. Are you smiling at seven? Or are you sad and lonely? Wherever you might have been at seven years old, I want you to tell yourself, I love you. seven-year-old morph into a 25-year-old. No matter how old you are, I want you to see that seven-year-old baby turn into a 25-year-old. I want you to see that 25-year-old braving the world, painting the town, and taking life by its horns. And I want you to tell that 25-year-old, I love you. because I know some of you don't even think you will make it to 30. I know once upon a time, some of you believe you didn't even, you would even make it to 16, 18, or 21. So please, see yourself at 50. And no matter how hard life has been, how easy it might have been, how big or how small, the sky above you did not come down. And the floor beneath you did not crack and crumble. In other words, you can make it. See that 50-year-old self and simply say what we've been saying so far all night. I, 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 I love you. at 84 years old. If you don't believe it's possible, one of the greatest poets and writers of all time lived to be 80. The legendary Miss Toni Morrison. So keep your eyes closed and know that it is possible for you to be 80. So see yourself at 80. Whether you're walking with a cane in a wheelchair or very slow, see yourself in that mirror. See all the lovers that you dare to love over and over again, no matter how many times they played you. No matter how many times you didn't get that job, but you gave all you got. No matter how many people you lost in life, you are still here at 80. Still trying and braving the day. And for the final time, I want you to give yourself some love and look at that 80-year-old and say, I love you. you're 
ready, you will open your eyes and come back to us. If some of the tears come tonight, if you need to scream or shout, I welcome it. You do not need to sit in your seat and snap. You can holler, scream, and shout if you feel it. We thank you for trusting poetry tonight. I want you to know before we get this show started, I'm going to take you some places. Some places you probably try to avoid every day of your life. But it is important that we take you there, and I want you to trust us to bring you home with a prayer. Okay? So, before we begin, I'm going to tell you a little story. In my first book of poetry, entitled 100 Poems for 100 Voices, my editor asked me one day, well, what made you become a poet? And I thought to myself, well, damn, what made me become a poet? that made me a poet derived from shit like this. Black mamas, no nonsense, social doctrine, verse 319. How many times I gotta tell you to get your ass up and do these dishes? Tired my ass if you don't get your black ass up. It came from Saturday mornings, pop banging along to the wake up sound of Frankie Beverly singing, before I let go. It came from the Third Amendment, I'm not one of your little friends. Written in the Don't Try Me or You'll Get Your Ass Whoop Bill of Rights edition. It came from Stay Out of Grown Folks' Face and Stay in the Child's Place, the warning. It came from I don't want ACS knocking on my door, so have your ass in this house before that clock hits six translations. I don't want anything to happen to you, baby. It came from the steps of Brooklyn, kids playing in the rain or sunshine while the ice cream truck sings nursery rhymes just like ashes, ashes, we all fall down. It came from what happens in this house stays in this house. So what happens in this house tonight stays in this house tonight. What happens in this house stays in this house. So what Uncle Ronnie did to you, what he did to you, how he took your voice, how he stole something and never given it back, what he did to you, it ain't that big of an issue. You see, this is the language that made me a poet. I've recently started writing a choreo poem. I live in Minneapolis right now, um, and I work for the Playwright Center. For those of you who don't know, I always bring this up so you have some context. The Playwright Center is where August Wilson wrote uh, Fences and A Ma Rainey Black Bottom. And so I'm working on a choreo poem, which is a play of poetry and sound and dance. Thank you. Which is a poetry of, um, a, a play of sound and dance and poetry. And, um, 
I started writing a piece called Swallow from Both Ends, and it's about six black bodies, and I use gender neutral language because I want anyone to play it 10,000 generations deep once I'm gone. And it's about six black bodies that heal from sexual trauma. And this next piece comes directly from that. The piece is called Swallow from Both Ends. Is this the hype of self-care? Who knows? But I do know the hype of being the lost one. And if self-care is about doing what you think you need or doing what you think you love, then I must not be able to think about love at all. Because I think about my body all day long. It's like a chip on my shoulder crumbling into every thought, bothering any peace this body can offer me. And my thighs, well, my thighs burn, navigating my path with no memory of how I got to be this big. And every time I'm hostage in the mirror, it's a new lie. Tomorrow, I'll start, and in six months, I'll be fine, and every nigga will take from my fountain. Shit, I said that yesterday. Or I'm fixing to quit after this last bite, and I know what I got to do. I just got to do it. A cycle I can't break except for when I fuck, and I do fuck, and I enjoy it, but I don't fuck with the lights on because I don't like the way I look. I embarrass myself every time I take my clothes off, and niggas are always saying, oh, I like them bigger because I need something. I mean, someone to hold on to. What the hell am I, a broken handle on a suitcase? I got nothing to hold on to, not even me. The busting out baggage, the broken hinges, the wounded fabrics, dragged, scarred by my own carelessness, it's mine. My sex asphyxiates new ideas from molesting truth to, to power. A high fiber diet to feel beautiful, yet I keep shoving a steak out my ass. I'm not making bullshit smell like dried lavender, but all I know is an aspirin to the headache. Ginger ale to the shits, Oreos to the craving, alcohol to memory, a joint to the calm, incense to cloud, candles to see, music to mask, raw dick to feel, stale lube to a bloody success. I keep failing my feelings. I keep failing my gut. One moment I think is too big to trust. I feel the truth breaking through the lining of my stomach is out to get me. It'd be like a trick, you know? too evident to be real. And every time I think I'm good, I go try and heal by Sunday, and then Monday comes, and so does the usual. My hole won't do more than suck up nuts. It won't give me what I need, and I need more. More than an overflowing honey, honey bush pulsating from receiving no touch. It's dripping filthy, and only a homie with nothing to lose would dare to touch it in broad daylight. There is no secret profundity nor any known loss of face to accompany the confusion of why my body keeps betraying me, how it keeps losing track of my pain while chafing my ass cheeks to have more bumps than a desperate body unwantedly shaving for a homie who is in fact waiting to leave you decapitated on your floor mattress once the two minutes of heedless pleasure is up. I don't want to touch me, let alone hold on to me. I mean, some days, I think I'm beautiful. Yeah. I'm a bad bitch God promised to take care of. And nobody, no army of hating ass zombies, no bitch disgusted with their own existence that wants to fuck their boyfriend's best friend can take that away. But then, Then I'll eat that extra scoop of pistachio ice cream. Walk past a mirror. And I'm reminded. I'm reminded of when he turns the lights on after and doesn't look in my direction. How his eyes are sharpened as he traces a path to the door. I, I, I just, like I said, I fuck. And I enjoy it. And out of 525,600 minutes a year, I feel beautiful for maybe about 15 minutes. But not even for a second within those 15 minutes am I willing to fuck with the lights on. 
Not with this body. Not with this body that chose me. Because I've been in and out of loving me. to touch myself right now. I don't really want to other than to help me sleep. And I sleep all day because somebody loves me in my dreams. Somebody asked me to dance and not just shake my ass. 17 billion niggas floating on green clouds are chanting my name, demanding that I am free. Because I've been in and out of loving me. And right now, I am so lonely. And I feel, I feel boxed and trapped in like the white casket they buried my mother in. Like my father dying on the day that I was born. That is, he went to the store for milk hours before my mother gave birth and never came back again. Because I've been in and out of loving me. And if I had a recipe for it, I would follow it. I would bottle it, spill a little in my tea in the morning, spread a little on my sandwich for lunch and for dinner. I would prop it up on a pillow and drink, and drink, and drink myself to death. Because I've been in and out of loving me. So imagine having to give yourself a daily dose of it's not you, it's them. Just to keep from mentally beating yourself up when you know deep down inside that you are not to blame, but unfortunately, a lover, a friend, a homie, if you will, they just won't get your pain because I've been in and out of loving me. And I, 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 I'm a little pissed that I keep losing shit. I lost my headphones twice and I never know where I place my keys. I be like, I know I put them in my goddamn bag. Yo, I hope nobody ain't robbing me, but I'm always losing shit. I'm good when it comes to holding other people's shit, but when it comes to me, I got to be extra careful because I lose things like childhood, and like childhood, well, I hope nobody ain't robbing me, because I've been in and out, and I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to touch myself right now. I don't really want to other than to help me sleep and I sleep all day because somebody loves me in my dreams. Somebody asked me to dance and I just shake my ass. 17 billion niggas 
folk in no green clouds are chanting my name, demanding that I am freed, demanding that someone claps for me long after this poem is over, that somebody picks flowers for me long after my choices outrun my immortality. You see, I, 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 I've been in and out. I, I've been in and out, out and in, in and out, out and in of loving, my Lord, I am so lonely, and you know, once I laid on the floor and I threw dirt in my mouth. And I hoped between the watering tears and the heat from my heart, a flower would sprout. And finally, finally, somebody would pick me. Because I've been in and out of loving me. Sing, Katora. I get so, so lonely. And I'll do anything. I can't let just anybody hold me you are the one that still is in me my dear i don't want no 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 see i've prayed to early may dear god i fasted for 30 days i am holding you accountable Still won't let me go Still it won't let me go For holding me accountable so let me For loving go. myself I'm gonna say that again let me go. Dear God I am holding you accountable For holding me accountable For loving myself Because I, I, I am so lonely And I seem to take anything That comes through my door Anybody that texts my phone or look my way, I just fall victim to it every time. And I'm nobody's victim. So I'm praying. And I've been in and out of loving me. And I hope one day, slowly, surely, I'll walk away from that old desperate and that craze of love. I said slowly, slowly so surely, surely, one day I'll walk away from that old desperate and that craze slowly. of love, that caught up in the maze of love, that crazy craze of love, that you think it was real, you think it was right, and hopefully I won't be so fucking lonely. I've been in and out of loving me. In and out. out and in. Oh, yeah. In and out. Out and in and hopefully oh, yeah. one day I'm I'm gonna love myself Slowly. just a little bit more than a day before I'm gonna love myself just a little bit more than a day before I'm gonna love myself just a little bit more than a day before I'm gonna love myself just a little bit more than a day before I'm gonna love myself just a little bit more than a day before I'm gonna love myself and one day I won't be so fucking lonely but for right now, I've been in and out of loving me. Thank you.
heaven sends a song through its doors just as if it seems to know I'm exclusively yours mm, knowing this I feel but one way you will understand it too with these words that I say, I'll close my eyes to everyone but you. And when I do, I'll see you standing there. I'll lock my heart to the other caress I'll never say yes to a new love affair I'll close my eyes to everyone but you, 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 you it will be a Thursday when you come home from playing basketball or shooting a shit with the fellas, and the table will be set with flowers and soft honey butter cornbread. The barbecue ribs will be roasting in the oven and the rice and peas will be out in a minute. And you'll sneak up behind me and kiss the side of my neck. Your warm yet needed touch will surprise me and I'll say, ooh, hey babe, how? And I'll be too busy licking your ear to even notice that your pants are now around your ankles. And somehow, some way, we'll end up in bed. And after we are done dining in and out of each other, you'll fall asleep. And I'll think how lucky you are to have me. And you'll reply through snores, it is I that is lucky to have you. Hold me. Because even in your sleep, you hold me. Even in your sleep, you hold me. Heaven sinks you through my doors because Lord knows it has been so fucking lonely and I needed somebody. I'm not sure I would have made it another day had you not arrived because you're different. You're different and special in every way imaginable. Baby, I love you from your hair follow cools down to your toenails. You got me feeling like the breeze, easy and free and lovely as can be. Oh, but when you touch me, I just can't control it. And when you touch me, I just can't hold it. The emotions inside of me all I can say is thank you, God, for sending you through my doors. Stay with me. Stay in this moment. You see, this poem is so important because you need to know that the love you dream of is a poem away. It is a story you have yet to walk into. It is somebody on a corner hailing a cab. Somebody at a job interview. You are worth love. Good, deserving, real love that will bring you no harm. I know many of us have been taught that it has to hurt in order for it to be right. Do yourself a favor and try to resist that. Try to believe love can feel good all the way around. Not just moments, but real love. Real, real, real love. There's a singer that I love. Some people call her overrated. 
And we're going to give you two lines, but I'm telling you, she's a being of love. I have seen her live. Katora, give us a little bit of one plus one. about algebra but I know that one plus one equals two it'll be a Thursday I don't know much about when you come home from playing basketball but one plus one equals two or shooting the shit with the fellas one plus one equals two and baby one plus one equals two. The table will be set with flowers. One plus one equals two. And salt, honey butter, cornbread. One plus one equals two. The barbecue ribs will be roasted in the oven. One plus one equals two. The rice and peas will be out in a minute. One plus one equals two. And somehow, make love one to me on a Thursday two. and you'll want nothing back from me one you don't want to harm me one. you don't need anything extra you just need me in my one. natural form do you understand one. what I'm saying you're two. worth this kind of love one day one. on a Thursday it while it's raining in Pennsylvania one. you'll come home one. It was two. and make love to me one. and maybe Jill one. Scott, one. Beyonce, Janet Jackson or Anita two. Baker will be on the radio and like the summer breeze, two, you'll flow easy two, and pretty as can be. Yeah. And right now, I'm just thinking about it. I'm not sure if I can hold it. One plus one. You see, sometimes the vision of love is too big. We try to avoid it. Oh, yeah. We bite into the apple that we're the strong person, the strong friend. We don't need nobody else. Oh, no. But I'm telling you, we all need somebody. It will be a Thursday. Thank you. <clears throat> so I have to, um, first of all, let's give it up for these beautiful, marvelous musicians and vocalists, Matt and Katora. <clears throat> Before I go forward, I just want to say, and you know, we're so used to not giving ourselves compliments, but I had a tumor removed two and a half months ago. So this is my first show since. Yeah. And I am, you know, pushing through and finding my way through. I'm only telling you that because life will happen. It will, and it must. So you must know how strong you are, that you can do anything. There is no mountain I can't climb, and I mean that. And I claim it for you, too. Whether you know it now or later or tomorrow, there is nothing you can't do. This next poem is from my first book of poetry. One day I was sitting and listening. Um, I was in my dorm at uh, New Paltz during the summertime and I had a summer job and I was listening and I kept hearing Ray Charles ask this question in one of his songs. And I thought to myself about just black people in general. First of all, happy Black History Month. Okay, how you doing? Um, and I thought about black people and how legally we weren't allowed to publish. We weren't allowed to write or read and how much history was lost. But if you say that to a black woman, she will be quick to tell you to hold on, slow down. Remember, we still have music. And so I thought about the information in music and how unfortunately in 2021, people are still fighting to bring music into the classroom as if music is not education. For those of you who are going into education, please 
consider the history of music. You don't always have to understand it. But if life was so simple, we wouldn't have music. If love could be just said, if you can express every feeling with every word, we wouldn't have music. So I wrote this piece. It's called An Ode to the Sounds of Blackness. Really what it is is a love story, a love poem, a love letter to black music and black history. When Ray Charles asked, come live with me and won't you be my love? Gladys said she's leaving to be with him on a midnight train to Georgia. Aretha politely demanded, will you call me the moment you get there? And Tony Braxton responded with maybe. John Legend said he'll think about it and Aretha circled back around with you better think. The black sound started a war between the East and West while leading thousands from the South to freedom. The black sound is the solution, the revolution, and the bigotry. If we say no more, the soul of America will cease to exist. The Negro spirituals didn't stop with the blues, and the blues didn't stop with hip-hop. Only those in touch will recognize the pattern. The same wants, the same needs, just written, spelled out, and delivered differently. Biggie said it was all a dream, and Meek Mills added a nightmare, too. After Teddy said it was time to wake up, soul to soul regulated us back to life, back to reality. The black sound is the parody of our perfect destiny. That's why everyone was so confused when Mary J. Block sang she was going down and Erica Badu only offered her three dollars and six dimes. It was such a contradiction when one black woman said, I can't stand the rain. But Rihanna sang, go on and let the rain pour. But LaShawn Pace cried, there's a leak in this old building and my soul has got to move. Luther Vandross giggled with good cause the house is not a home. Everyone still confused, turned to the education and the miss replied, Lauren is only human. So they turned to Nas and he offered one love, enticing Stilo to holler, fuck you and uh, fuck her too. You see when Marvin asked what was going on, Alicia Keys had to tell the truth with karma. In the name of the black sound, Miley Cyrus twerks, Justin Timberlake riffs, and Christina Aguilera holds all her syllables. While Beyonce rings the alarm of formation, Sam Cooke suggests it seems like a change is gonna come. And sweet Etta James relieved, exhales with don't believe that the black sound will save America, huh? Well, shh, baby, be quiet and listen closely. And finally, this final poem, I'm gonna tell you a little true story before I uh, deliver it to you. It is the first poem I've ever wrote. I was in a remedial writing class. Would you believe that? I was in a remedial writing class in college. I went to a community college first. And um, I, had, I have a best friend who aunt was addicted to drugs. And we were in class, and she got a phone call, and I, I ran out with her. She ran out, and I'm the kind of friend, you know, I'm going to hold you down. 
I don't know what's going on, but we gonna do now, I ask questions later. And then I found out her aunt overdosed. Her aunt has a 12 year old daughter, you know, and I was wise enough in that moment to know sometimes your friend just needs your breath. Not words, not it will be all right, because sometimes it's not. And I stayed quiet and I went back to class the next day and um, my professor, I just couldn't write. I was, you know, I'm an empath. I'm sure most of you are. You know, you feel what your friends are feeling. You know, people be like, what's wrong? You're not trying to tell nobody business? Like, damn, stop asking me. I said I'm good, you know? Um, and so my professor said, what do you need to write? And honest to God, I said, Nina Simone. He said, when Nina stops singing, you stop writing. That night, I went to an open mic, um, and I had never, it was the first poem, and I have never uh, performed poetry before. And I went to the open mic. For those of you who don't believe me, the, the video's on Facebook. Don't go searching for it, but it's up there. And I had the uh, paper in front of my face, and I was shaking. And, and when I was done, I took the paper down, and everyone leaped to their feet. And I thought to myself, you know, God can work a miracle. In this moment, in all of that pain, I found my gift. This poem is called Smoking No More. It's the last poem in my first book of poetry called 100 Poems from 100 Voices. I wish, I wish my brother wasn't smoking no more. Because if he wasn't smoking no more, yo, don't you know that he would probably be one of the greatest reporters you'll see on TV? He'd be on ABC, NBC, oh yes, even BET. He would definitely be the epitome of what a great journalist is supposed to be if he wasn't smoking no more. Always two steps ahead of the rest, he'd be totally dedicated to keeping us abreast of current events and honorable mentions and speaking at conventions, able to face the toughest crowds without flinching, carefully choosing words, beautifully spoken if he wasn't smoking no more. I wish my sister wasn't smoking no more. Because she looks so much different than she did before. And her skin used to have such a beautiful glow. But she don't even comb her hair no more. She just stays up geeking for weeks in a row. And you know her opinion of herself is low. Because she doing all kind of shit she never did before. And doing all these things ain't gonna do nothing but bring her self-esteem way, 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 way down low until she'll have to look up just to see the flow. And the shit won't stop there, you know, because once it gets started, it just likes to go, and before long, it'll really start to show how she, how she losing her power, and her spirit is broken, and no oh Lord have mercy, I, 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 I wish my sister wasn't smoking no more. My God. I wish upon a star I wish, I wish, I wish. I wish my mama wasn't smoking no more because I get tired of crying for her. When she gets tired of trying for her and her spirit is slowly dying, yet her attitude is finally lacking gratitude. Sometimes becoming downright rude, that shit she's sniffing, it takes her through so many moods. And she's hardly eating but any food and y'all can go and fuck nutrition cause every day and every night she's on a whole other mission. And once again I'm right back, whack back, right back, right back, right back, right back, right back to wishing, damn! I wish she only listened. Can't she feel how much I miss it? Can't she feel how much I love her? Can't she feel how much I miss it? Spending time with her. Spending time with her. 
kicking the wobo. She used to like KC, I used to like JoJo. Together we were hoping they would never go solo. Be like Al Green and stay together and not like, like Puffy and JLo. But that was our dream. Way back in the day though, before, you know? And this is the honest God truth. All I could do was keep. All I could do was keep praying and coping, keep giving you love and support, and hope that you'll keep your mind open to what you can do and take back your power when you're ready to. But until that does happen, you won't feel what I'm saying. You won't take me more serious and realize that I ain't playing. You need to keep praying and staying in touch. I'm always going to be here because I love you that much. But looking at your life, it fills me with a heart to shake feeling. I, 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 I'm filled with emotions. Sometimes I can't talk because my tears got me choking. And I can't do my job and I'm supposed to be joking and I'm supposed to be laughing and I'm supposed to be crying and I'm supposed to be dying and I'm supposed to be free. I'm supposed to be free. I'm supposed to be me and I'm supposed to be me. I'm supposed to be me. I'm supposed to be me. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to, Katora, sing for me, please. so hard to stay alive it's enough going on in the world and the last thing I need to be trying to do is love somebody who can't love themselves enough the last thing I need to be doing is trying to love somebody who can't love me back so God if you can hear me I'm trying to see what they can't see I'm trying to do what's best for me and still love them the best way that I can. Can I get another amen? Amen. God. Amen. I can't. Amen. I can't keep going. is probably what you say to yourself every day. Am I correct? Amen. Yes, yes? Sometimes you feel like you're not worthy of love. Yes? Yes, yes? And sometimes you feel like it's impossible to carry on. Yes, yes? Well, I'm here to tell you, baby. Life is worth it. It is worth it. And you can do it. You can do it. are worth the word help. Help me, I need help. I am worth, I am worth, you are worth help. You can do it. Help. Help. You can do it. You see, nobody can decide what your life can move through, nobody but you. You understand? An obstacle is a thing that impedes or blocks one's way. You can climb over, you can chip through it, you can go around it, you can ignore it, but you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And you can do it. 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 You see, you are worth it. Yes, you are. You are worth it. Yes, you are. Help. I 
started this show off by asking you all to close your eyes and I want to ask you to go there for me one more time. Close your eyes and remember nobody is judging you but you. So let your belly hang, let your jaw relax, relax if possible. If anybody comes in your mind in this moment asking you to take care of them, please reject that and take care of yourself. I want you to know that your life is worth saving, that you can go through any valley and climb any mountain. You can swim any sea and walk any street. You can go home and be loved properly. All you have to do is believe, believe in yourself, believe that there is someone else out there capable to love you. Resist the narrative that you are too big to be loved. You are too small for a hug and you are not enough. I'm telling you that life is possible if you believe, if you believe, and all you got to do is tell yourself, I love you. 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 I I I I love you. I love you. I love you. I I I I love you. I love you. I love you. I I I I give me all men. that did you wrong every time you dared to love has brought you to this moment to this very moment as you sit in these chairs so keep your eyes closed and collectively we're going to do something you probably haven't done all night which is breathe okay all right breathe one two three and breathe We thank you for trusting poetry and believing in music. We thank you for believing in vocals and allowing us to be so vulnerable. It is our pleasure to bring you love, lessons, and letters with Lester live in the moment. We hope that you continue to trust poetry, and if you don't invite us back, please invite another poet. Don't give up on us. Invite a singer, a keyboardist, a violinist. Believe in art. It saves people's lives if you let it, okay? We thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. God, it is so hard to be here, to move on with life. When you love somebody who's smoking. Thank you for having us. A round of applause for them, please. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Um, 
this is really important to me. Um, we graduated from the same high school in Harlem, New York. Um, and Lester also performs my commencement speech at my graduation. So, full circle. Um, okay, so now we're gonna have our very own BSA faculty advisor, Dr. Emanuela Cusick, assistant professor of English and Africana Studies and the co-director of the Africana oh. So this is so many things at once, right? So content-wise, as you said, it's music, it's poetry, mm. um, you know, it's a meditation, it's a call to action. It, it's also, well, I tried to say formally, it's so many different things. And then content-wise also, it's, you know, it's an elegy, it's also so life-affirming, it's a meditation, it's a site of refuge. And so could you tell us a little bit more about how did you choose the pieces of how to put this together, both in terms of where the music would come in and where the poetry would come in, and then what would cover which parts of, like I said, which parts were elegy, which parts were joy, mm. pain, how did you pull this all together? It's so varied and yet so cohesive. Mm, thank you for that. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, and feel free, uh, Matt and Katora, yeah. to chime in too. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I went through all of my books. I have three books of poetry. Um, look at me lying. I have two books of poetry <laughs> and one book of critical uh, analysis. The second book of poetry is called African Booty Scratch, a loving the dark child with yellow teeth, peasy head, and a broken smile. The third one is called A Spring of Gay Black Feminine Joy, A Critical Moment. Um, and I went through those pieces anytime I'm doing a show to pull the message out. And um, I wanted to be real, you know, full, full human being. I'm tired of turning on, you know, uh, Instagram or looking at my phone or music and everything is so superficial, you know. Meanwhile, cousin is in the kitchen getting high two seconds away from an overdose. And I thought, um, if ever I, I get the chance to use my gift, I'm gonna always be honest. Um, and so I went through these poems and I, I, I just, I don't know, the spirit speaks. Mm -hmm. The same spirit, you know, that I cook with. The same, mm -hmm. um, and so I trust it. Um, as far as the music is concerned, I'm gonna let one of these two answer it. Hey y'all. Um, just a little context, I don't know if anyone knows, but me, Lester, and Matt um, just met last summer. And I, it was clearly a divine meeting because I met him at a time where I was struggling with, um, well still, <laughs> dealing with self-image, uh, spirituality, existentialism, all those things, wondering what is my purpose. And so, um, we collaborated to choose songs that are vulnerable by meeting him. Let's get emotional now. Um, take your time. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't apologize. Earlier today, we were talking about doldrums, and I don't know if anyone knows what a doldrum is, but it's when a ship is at sea and there's no wind. And so it, there's a period of time where it just doesn't move. And um, I was in that period for a long time and his poems freed me. His poems made me face myself and my love of music and the things that I've been hurt by, but the way music lifts me, you know? And so I've, come to love music in a different way. I've come to love language in a different way. Um, didn't mean to get all deep, but it just, everything that came together tonight, everything that came together that night, there's no Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm also from Brooklyn. Um, so I was wondering like how Brooklyn has shaped your artwork and like, I don't know, when I'm writing poetry, I'm always thinking about where I'm from and like how that shapes my identity and like the literal lyrics that I write. Um, so I was just wondering that for you, yeah. Yeah, um, and so I, 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 you know, Tupac says rose that grew from the concrete, that's real. Um, but Brooklyn for me is everything. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I have to start with Lil' Kim. That was the first poet I ever heard. 
uh, Missy Elliott, Biggie, you know, you walk through the street, you hear these people, um, and then, you know, you go to school singing it and you like pop because you fast, but you don't know your ABCs. Um, but the language of these artists was the truth. And I didn't understand any of it. But I saw what it did to the older black people, my cousins and family and friends. I saw what it did. I saw how my aunt came home on Friday and played Betty right out with a glass of e &J or Shaka Khan or uh, Gladys Knight. And I saw the healing. And I saw my cousins as hard as they wanted to be. When I Will Always Love You came on, they were soft as Whitney. You know, and I saw the power of music. But Brooklyn is just, I mean, there's poetry everywhere in Brooklyn. Gives. And nobody was gonna move them off that mountain. And I believe that for myself and I believe that for my work. And so when I'm creating or picking pieces that I've created, um, I trust my work enough. You know, I'm wise enough to know when to step away from the work and when to live life and let the work heal me. You know, and if, like James Baldwin says, if it ever hurts for you to hear it tonight, it hurt for me to write it first. I had to dry out the tears first. I had to go there. I had to scream. I had to shout. I had to lose everything just to get to that one line in that poem. So, um, yeah, Brooklyn is, is, is the backbone for me of just, of just everything. Uh, yeah, I do plan on returning to Brooklyn um, when the job is offered and the money is right, but not now. <laughs> Robin, do we have time for a couple more? Yeah? yeah? Who wants to go next? I tell you what, I've never been a fan of rap. But when you said that, I thought, huh, I kind of get it. So thank you, because I think that, um, I remember the first time I heard him use the word F-U-C-K, you know how I had to spell it out. I thought, oh my God, I, I, don't, know if I, can, I don't know if I can take it. But honestly, um, it's the poetry, not so much the words, but the way they, I don't know, make you feel. And I really do appreciate um, having you here tonight in um, BSA, and you probably didn't know that Dr. Emmanuel Acoustic is actually the advisor to VSA, so mm -hmm. they've come a long way and they're doing great things, and we're really excited to have you. Um, but anybody else? Yeah. Hello. Um, Hi. Hello. <laughs> thank you for being here once again. Um, I actually have two questions. The first one is, where did you get your inspiration to perform? Like, was there someone specific that inspired you to perform this way with this style? And the second question is, like, what's your Insta and where can we buy your books? <laughs> um, thank you, beautiful questions. And thank you. There's some available on ABE books. Um, but I am an independent author, so I would appreciate spreading the word and, you know, supporting me or supporting any other independent authors you have. Um, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. So we're actually exactly out of time. Time, but I, I, I wanted to say briefly, you mentioned Baldwin a couple times, yes. and as you- We can to keep students in school, and we're doing the best we can to grab students. I'm sure we all are aware that the suicide rates is going up ridiculously, and as you know, it's been happening a lot. It's been happening, but people with money, I'm saying that to say money doesn't make you happy. I mean, I would like to find out, but <laughs> money, People are still ending their life. And we have to start to do everything we can to get them into the space to express themselves. Education is not the only place, but whatever you do, uh, try to incorporate art more, believe in it a little more, hang a painting. Um, you know, if you find yourself staring at an empty spot in your house, it's calling for something to go there. Don't ignore it. Put a picture up. Something that's gonna inspire you to fight one more day when you feel tired the most. Finally, I say before we end, in all seriousness, can't nobody decide what your life can move through but you. You gotta make the choice to be here and make it again, make it again, and make it again. There's no better ending than that. So thank you, and thank you to BSA and the Office of Multicultural Life for putting this together. Haley, you are amazing, and Robin and Chris. So and thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.